Okay, hey everyone. So we're gonna do a little demonstration of how to uh, box and pour your uh, final impression for like complete dentures or for partial dentures or for immediate dentures, whatever you're doing. So it's really important to know how to uh, box and pour. Um, and I was told that maybe you didn't get too much in lab practice for this. So what you need is basically a one to one to one ratio of plaster, pumice, and water. Uh, and basically you're just gonna mix everything together until you get the consistency you want. It doesn't have to be perfect ratio. Um, you'd probably wanna add water in small increments because if you add too much water, it's gonna take forever to set and you won't be able to uh, really do much with it. The goal here is to submerge this impression in the pumice plaster mixture until there is only about two to three millimeters of your flange showing all the way around. If it goes a little deeper, it's okay. We can cut off the pumice mixture afterwards. So you just mix. Now usually we'll just estimate the one to one. And just mix it until you get like a nice homogeneous mixture that's not too wet not too dry so this I would say is too watery it just plops right off so I'm just gonna add a little more pumice and a little bit of plaster Okay, it's better. And then I'll just keep doing that until I have the consistency I want. Okay, so now I have it the way I want. It's pretty, it's not too watery. It's not too solid. But remember, you do have a time limit here. So I'm gonna take all this and just pour it on the plate here. and kind of make it into a nice box in a way. And the more you work with it, the easier it's gonna get. If it's too runny, you can wait a little bit. It'll harden up. And then just take your impression and submerge it. And then push the material onto it from all the way around. And again, if <clears throat> this might be still a little too runny, if you feel like <clears throat> if you feel like it's still too runny, just keep doing this. It'll harden up. But once you get it nice and tight around your impression, make sure there are no undercuts. As you can see, I'm kind of pushing it tightly against the impression because I do not want any microstone to go into any void areas. And in the end, I'll trim all this access <clears throat> off. All right, so it's pretty, it's getting harder, but it's not fully set right now. And I just want to evaluate the height of everything. So,
when I look around, I see that this area right here is not two millimeters below the uh, final impression. So I'm just gonna either take a buffalo knife, take a scalpel while it's still somewhat soft and just remove it down. Even back here. And be careful to try not to harm the impression. <clears throat> Over here, I think it's good. So I'm, all I'm gonna do is kind of smooth it out a bit. and kind of flatten the land area. <clears throat> Ideally, you want about three millimeters of space here of showing and about uh, at least three millimeters of land area going outside. But it's okay if you have a little more. I mean, after this, I'm just gonna trim it a little bit in the trimmer. Like I would say right here, it's probably a little too high, but it's okay, it's not the end of the world. It'll just mean your uh, vestibule is gonna be a little deeper and you just have to trim the microstone off a little bit. But here still, I wanna bring this down even lower. Yep. So now I've basically got it to the height where I want. This is a little too much here, so I'm just gonna take this to the trimmer, trim it, and uh, to where I, I want it to be. I basically want to leave land area about three millimeters all the way around, at least three millimeters all the way around. The more confined and trimmed it is, the easier it is to box too, when, when you use the boxing wax. Because if it's so big, you may have to use two pieces, and you don't want to do that, it's just a pain. Yep. All right, so for the lower arch, the same rules apply. You want to make sure that the pumice is at least about three millimeters uh, away from all the borders around here and that goes with down where the retromolar pad area is too so right here we're going to keep removing this pumice to reveal the entire impression and more so a lot of times we'll make like a notch in this area to remove and it'll kind of look like a depression right here and it'll make your impression at the end look much nicer. Because you can see, as I said, you want two millimeters showing everywhere, and that includes down here. You want the pumice to be two millimeters below this base. All right, so now after trimming it, I kind of have it in a, as uniform as I want it to be. And since it's smaller, it'll be easier to, bo uh, to box. Um, you can see, I just try to keep a nice uniform, at least two to three millimeter land area all around. Um, take before boxing it you, if you have areas that are really thin like over here over here now is the opportunity to add some wax and think it, thicken it up because if it's too thin and you pour it up it's gonna be really hard to make a uh, record base like in wax rim to go into that really thin area so over here it's all good but then over here it's a little thin so we're just gonna add some wax over here and make this about a millimeter to two millimeters thicker so when we pour it up, it'll be an easier space to get that base in. You don't have to worry about trimming the microstone. So after we did the trimming, if there are any areas that were really thin, um, it's always recommended to add a little bit of wax to thicken them up. So you could see I had thin areas here and here. So I added some wax, I made it thicker, and it's gonna be made e much easier to get like a wax record base, like and wax rim when you do that pink record base material, the acrylic it'll be easier to get it back there. So, uh, or if you're doing whatever process you're doing, uh, you don't have to trim away the stone, you have space. And it's not really gonna interfere with anything. So now I did that, the next step is make sure you Vaseline the pumice. Very important, before you uh, pour it up, you want a Vaseline. <laughs> Do not uh, try to avoid getting much Vaseline on the impression. But all I'm doing here, 
is just vaselining the pumice just on the, uh, I don't know, whatever border this is. Not the entire thing, just this top occlusal side. I try to avoid getting the Vaseline like all over the uh, impression. If I do get some on, I just wipe it off from the impression. Yep. All right, so now after I Vaselined the border all the way around, the purpose of the Vaseline is so when you pour up the microstone, it'll be easier to separate the cast. Next, after that, just box it. And you'll need two uh, boxing wax. The, make sure it's like a tight fit all the way around just so you minimize any microstone that goes in. This is like the old boxing wax. This is the good kind. The kind downstairs is not as good. All right. Pinch the ends together just so to kind of meld the boxing wax together. And the reason you want two is because one bag of microstone will not be enough. And the height here is not enough as we see it. And just pinch it all together all the way around to help sustain. It doesn't have to be a perfect second one. Just make sure it's tight again. Make sure there's enough height for the land area. Then that's it. I put the two layers of box and this is basically how you pumice up and box your final impression. Um, next step will be to pour it up in microstone. I'm not going to do a video on that. You guys know how to pour up with microstone. Ideally you want to use the vacuum mixer for this. Um, but we don't live in an ideal clinical world. <laughs> so uh, do it with your own discretion whether you want to use the vacuum mixer or just hand mix it really well with a little extra water. <laughs> yeah. All right.